Happy Thursday, everybody. I pray all is well. My name is Michael Gibson, and I'm talking about why I go to church. I've been talking about why I go to church for a very, very, very long time. But as I look around and I see the events that are happening, I realize that it's ever more important to stay focused and that there's no time to fall. Good afternoon, Kathy. Many times we fall because we lose our focus. We allow our attention to go in other directions. We allow the world to distract us. We allow our jobs to distract us. We can allow our children and our spouse to distract us. But I want to tell you to keep the main thing the main thing. God is the main thing for me. And my goal is to keep him the main thing. He is the source of my inspiration. He is the thing that keeps me up at night thinking about the greatness and the goodness that I can have in my life. When you look at our society, it has a way of telling you that you can't achieve the best things for your life. It has a way of saying that you can only live in this neighborhood and that you can only drive this car. And I'm reminded of a song that my grandmother would always sing. She would say, you know, my father is rich in houses and land. He holds the world in the palm of his hand. Tell him that I'm the child of God. And we used to sing this song that I'm a king's kid. And I used to wonder how could we sing that song and I would see that they weren't living their best life, what I thought their life should be. But success is different for every single person. Some people are happy being mediocre. Some people are happy being average. Some people are happy being below average. I'm just not one of those people. And I keep diving in this world over and over again because God keeps reminding me every single day that you can achieve every dream and desire that I have placed on the inside of you if you walk according to my statutes, if you keep my word and you do the things that I have told you. It's raining where I'm at today. It's raining pretty hard, but you know that rain stops, you know that storms cease, you know that clouds do pass, you know that the cold does go away. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. And the wonderful thing about focus, this allows you to get disciplined. Focus allows you to get disciplined because your eyes is on the prize, your eyes is on the goal, your eyes is on whatever you set your sights on. And when you have focus, it allows you to get an umbrella. It allows you to pick up a snow shovel. It allows you to go through all those seasons because you are truly focused on the thing that God has placed on the inside of you. I know I keep saying this over and over again. The dream that God is giving you is yours. People can't see the dream that God is giving you until you work the dream that God is giving you. Your dreams will never become a reality if you don't never put any effort into making them come a reality. Your dream will always be a dream if you don't have a plan. Your dream will always be a dream if you never work your purpose. Your dream will always be on paper if you never speak it out of your mouth. I keep diving in this word because God keeps telling me that I got to hold on and that I will reap if I faint not. Hey, Jules, if I faint not, I will reap. If I keep holding on to his unchanging hand, that the favor of God will surround me like a shield. Many times we give up and we're so close. We're so close to achieving the thing that we always dreamed of achieving, but we just give up. I've come too far to turn back now. I've prayed too long to stop praying. I done praise God too much to stop praising. I didn't gave too much of my time, energy, and effort just to say I'm not going to serve God anymore. 
I've done way too many things to turn back. I'm actually afraid to turn back because I don't want that life that I used to have. I don't want the life of looking over my shoulders and having heartache. I don't want the life of just being depressed sometimes because I didn't know if I was going to make it. I remember a few years ago when the gas prices got really, really high. The gas prices got close to like $4, $5. And at that time I had a company vehicle and it didn't matter to me what the gas prices were because I wasn't paying the gas. But the Lord dropped a word on my heart. God said, God always sustains. God always supply. You will never run out of gas. That's right, Kathy. You come too far to turn back now. It's no time to fall. I mean, you don't put too many hours in. You don't put too many sleepless nights in. You don't pulled enough hair out metaphorically to, to try to go back. You, 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 don't put, you don't put it out there. And when you put your faith out there on Front Street, people are going to look at you crazy. But when your dreams become reality, those will be the same people that want to pat you on the back and say, I knew you could do it. I'm telling you, I'm focused on the things that God has told me. And I'm not turning back. You can do anything when you put your mind to it, when you put your focus to it, when you put your energy into it, when you put your heart into it. Because when your heart is into it, you're willing to work for it. You're willing to go after it. I remember as an athlete, I was required to get up in the morning and we would have to go running early in the morning before class started. So we would run before class. Then after we got out of class, we'd have to go run again. Then after class, we would have practice. And we'd have to repeat that step over and over and over and over and over again. And it's because I wanted to be great, I was willing to put in the work. Because I wanted to be great, I was willing to study film. Because I wanted to be great, I was willing to get up early. Because I wanted to be great, I was willing to eat healthy. Because I wanted to be great, I was willing not to have friends. Because I was wanting to be great, I treated my body right. If you want to be great in this world, do what God tells you to do, and you will see greatness. Greatness is achieved when you obey the voice of God. I'm learning that using your gift is great, but using your gift and your purpose creates power. Many people are using their gift, but it doesn't create any purpose, so there is no real power. So if you want some power, Ask God what your purpose is. Ask God to order your steps. Ask God to direct you. And I don't know any other better place to, to go than to get into this word. I've said many times, the church, the physical church, is just where you fellowship. But we are the church. We are his body. We are his eyes. We are his hands. We are his feet. We are his mouth. We are his ears. We are his legs. We are the thing that's supposed to make the kingdom work. We are the thing that is supposed to be reaching this world. We are the people that are supposed to be the extension of who God is. Hey, Ashley, we are to be the extension of who God is. And if we can't supply any hope to people, what's the point of us going and saying that God is a healer, that God is a deliverer, that God is a way maker, if God is not making any ways for us? And I'm not saying that our life is always going to be rosy, but what I can tell you is that God is a healer, that God is a sustainer, that God is a deliverer, that God is a way maker, that God is, is a lover of my soul. God is the person that gives you peace in the midst of the storm. God is the one that will cause you to be anchored when it seems like the world is trying to blow you away. God is the one that can put a smile on your face when people talk about you. God is the one that can make you leap and shout and be happy. Even though there is chaos all around you, it is God that gives all those things. Because he said, it is my peace that I give to you, not as the world give it, but as I give it to you. We can see right now that we can't depend on this world. You can see right now when they act funny with the money, God is able. But God is able to do everything that he promised to you. But he's not going to do everything that he promised to you when you can't do what he asked you to do. I've come too far to turn around. I've come too far to turn around and I'm unwilling to go back. I'm unwilling to go back. I don't want to encourage you to be unwilling to go back to the things of your former life and of your former years. 
And if your life is not where you want it to be, all you got to do is follow the Romans road. The Romans road. He said, believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. It's amazing that when you put your mind on God, and you put your mind on the things above, the things that you thought were holding you down, you realize that God has already pulled you above those things. Because you can be in the jailhouse like Paul and Silas and begin to praise God and begin to break the chains and the bands that are on other people. See, sometimes you gotta be in the jailhouse because somebody else is bound in the jailhouse and they need your praise to set them free. It don't matter if you're in the jailhouse, it don't matter if you're in the pit, it don't matter if you're in the middle of the desert. As long as they're breasting your body, you ought to praise the Lord. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So, I'm going to give you a little story. I did this bike ride that was 150 miles, 75 miles in each direction. And the first time I, I did that bike mile, I, that bike ride, I didn't train for it. In my mind, I said, if I could ride 10 miles, then I could ride 70 miles. Now, that may have been flawed logic, but I figured I was an athlete. And every rest stop was 10 miles apart that I could stop, recoup, and get some energy. Well, about 35 miles into it, my body began to cramp. I didn't account for that. And I remember being at the lunch stop and I was talking to my wife and I said, I don't think I can make it. And she said, you can make it. Just keep going. You can make it. About another 10 more miles, my body began to shut down. My legs began to cramp so, by, so bad but we ran into these people and they were in the bag. They had music, they had snacks, they had Icy Hot, they had ibuprofen. And I was like, wow, I need to hang out with you guys. And they was like, oh, we, we're prepared. We're prepared. So we brought all these things to help us get through this journey. And I remember they, they said, look, Here's some Icy Hot, here's some ibuprofen, and here's a protein bar. You can make it. And I remember I was at the last rest stop before the finish line. I was so dehydrated. I was so in so much pain. I mean, every time I pedaled, my, my, my quadricep would cramp up. And then when I pushed back up, my hamstring would cramp up. And my wife said, look, I can't wait for you any, any, any longer. I'm just gonna go to the end. And I remember, and this is gonna sound crazy, there was a song that said, I almost gave up, but God held me close and I wouldn't let go. And for the last 20 miles of this bike ride, I kept singing that song, that God's mercy kept me and I wouldn't let go that I'm alive today because of his mercy. The point of this was I was focused and I was determined to finish the race, even though my body was shutting down, even though my will was beginning to get weak. My mind overrode my body. My mind overrode my feelings. My mind overrode, my spirit overrode the will of my human nature. There's going to come a point when you got to be focused on God, that your spirit will override your feelings. Your spirit will override your body. Your spirit will override your circumstances. When you hold on to God, you can make it. And that stuck with me because I sang that song and I kept singing that song and I was like, I want to give up. I was in tears by the time I got to the end because literally my body had been cramping for over 40 some miles. My body was cramping. I was at exhaustion. But when I was at my lowest physical point, God sent help for me along the way. He sent some people that done it before. And they said, this is what you need to do. You can make it. And then when I got to my breaking point, 
I held on to the word of God. I held on to that song and I kept singing that song. I almost let go, but God's mercy kept me. I'm alive today because of his grace. And it's because of my focus that I was able to finish. It was because of my focus, my faith, my determination that I overrode the natural circumstances. If you come onto this video today, your faith can override your feelings. Your faith will override your natural circumstances. Your faith can override your body. Your faith can override that hopeless situation. No matter where you are, when you don't think you can make it, God will send somebody along the way to sustain you. When you think your cupboard is about to be bare, God will send somebody around to link up with you to sustain you. God always supplies. God always sustain. God always come through. If you hold on to his unchanging hand, hold on to God. Don't give up. Hold on to God. Don't give up. Don't let go. Hold on. Say, I'm going to hold on until you bless me. I'm going to hold on until you bless me. Sometimes we just give up because we think that all hope is not lost. God is the one who has the blueprint. God is the one who is charting your course. It's you that can't see your way. God always already knows the way. Just because you can't see your way doesn't mean that God is not directing your steps. Stop listening to the voice of the enemy. That's why you got to get into your word. Because when you feel like giving up, you can say that I have a friend that sticks closer than any brother. When you feel like all hope is lost, you can say that in my weakness, he is made strong. When you feel like you have no joy, you can say that the joy of the Lord is my strength, no matter where you are. You can make it. And guess what? I did that bike race again. But I learned from my experiences and I began to prepare differently. I began to train my body. I no longer was happy with being able to drive 10 miles without stopping. Every day I got on that bicycle and I would train every single day. Every single night I got on that body and I would, I would push my body more and more and more because when you get on the bicycle the first thing that starts to hurt is your backside because the seat is small i don't care how much cushion you put on that seat when you're on a bicycle seat for two three four hours your backside is going to be in pain but guess what happens when you go to the bicycle shop they say the first thing for you to be a successful cyclist you must ride this bicycle until you get past the pain of your backside until your backside becomes numb then you can keep riding. I want to tell you that when you train for the things of God, you got to get numb to the pain of this world. You got to get numb to the world saying that you can't make it. You got to get past the point of disappointment and know that God, if he said that he's going to do it, he's going to do it. If God brought it to you, you will get through it. What happens is we think we're going to get through this life just any old kind of way. We think that we can... There, some things you got to push past, some things you got to override. And I can tell you the second time I rode that bicycle race, I could drive 50 miles nonstop. I didn't need no brakes. So I rode that race confidently because I had prepared, because I refused to lose. I looked at what I'd done the last time and, I, and it wasn't good enough. And I made adjustments. I made my body come to subject to my will because I didn't think that I could ride 50 miles nonstop. And I didn't get the 15 miles nonstop the first time I rode. What I first did, I said, I'm going to start with just five miles. I started with five miles and worked up to 10 miles and worked up to 15 miles and worked up to 20 miles and then 25 miles. And then I finally got the 50 because I didn't give up. I kept working because I was focused. I was determined to do this race again with no pain. I was determined to make it with no help. I was so determined. That's how you gotta get with your faith. That's how you gotta get with your walk. You gotta be so determined to live a victorious life that you are willing to pray when you don't feel like praying. You are willing to fast when you don't feel like fasting. You are willing to study when you don't feel like studying. You are willing to shout and give God a praise in advance when your circumstances seem insurmountable. You gotta be able to give a glory to God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. You gotta give God a yet praise. Yet will I praise you. No matter what it look like, we got to give God a yet praise because what he's already done, he already finished his work. 
but it's up to us to make our way prosperous. And when you are focused, when you are determined, when you really want it bad enough, you will do the things that other people won't do. See, successful people do the things that unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. Are you willing to put in the work to finish your course, to have God say, well done, that good and faithful servant? I'm willing to put in the work because I've come too far. I done fasted enough times. I done prayed enough times. I done seen the hand of God enough times to know that there is just no better way. There are other ways to do life. But I want you to know that there is just no better way to do life. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing that I've ever done. You can't change your personality that God is giving you. But guess what? You could change how you look at life. You could change how you view life. And if you put your hand in God's hand, you will see that you can live your best life. You can live a victorious life. You can be in the gutter. You can be in the middle of the desert. And God can bring you water. God can bring you out. There was nothing too hard for my God. But God is hampered by our lack of faith. I want to encourage you. Find a place where your soul can be fed. Find a place where you can elevate your mentality to rise above where you are. Because when you are focused... You will stand in line for a Black Friday sale and it's freezing cold outside. When you are focused, you will finish the race regardless of the physical limitations that your body's saying that you can't do. When you are focused, you will not quit when you are focused. So get focused. Get in your word and see what God is asking and require of you. God requires us all to do something, all of us to do something. And everything that we do is very important. And I just want to encourage you. You don't have to do Facebook Live to be ministering. Because some of the most vital organs of our bodies are not the external ones. They are the internal ones, like your heart your lungs, and your kidneys, and your livers. These are the things that are not seen. I need people to pray for me. I need people to encourage me. I need people to send a, give me a smile. Those little things are the things that can help the people that are out front go longer. We need people to sow a seed of kindness. We need people to sow the seed of love. We need people to sow a seed of just, you can make it, you can do it. So don't think that you gotta go live. Don't think that you gotta be a preacher. Don't think that you gotta be an evangelist. Don't think that you have to be a teacher to be an effective minister. Cause ministry is just simply serving, serving the people of God. And if you're about advancing the kingdom, you can serve God by directing people to their seats. You can serve God by opening up the door for the people that are coming into the sanctuary. You can serve God by folding up those altar cloths. You can serve God by taking out the trash. You can serve God by just being available to do the work of the kingdom. There's a saying that your best ability is your availability. Are you available to God? Are you available to be used by God? Anybody that watched this video, I want you to ask yourself that question. Are you available to be used by God? Are you available? Make yourself available to be used. But this is Michael Gibson, and this is why I go to church. Because, yes, ma'am, you, you can sweep that floor. You can sweep that floor. And I, I, I tell you this story. My pastor talks about his home church that, well, not his home church, but the church that he came from in Philadelphia and how vacuuming the floor, they used to put lines in the carpet. And when he had to vacuum the carpet, he realized how hard it was to make those lines straight. 
Vacuuming your carpet, the carpet in the house of the Lord is a ministry. Cleaning up the sanctuary is a ministry. Everything we need to make it work. So we need all the volunteers. We need all the greeters. We don't just need speakers. We need people to do the administration and everything else to make this kingdom work. We need it all. We need it all and God wants it all and God requires it of us. But I'm telling you, I've come too far to turn back now. I'm focused. I want to get all the things that God has placed in my heart. I want to see my desires. I want to see my desires because God gave me those desires. And God is calling all of us to live above and not beneath. And you can live above. You don't have to be limited by your job and by your paycheck. Your gifts will make room for you when you make room for your gift. If this message has blessed you, please share it out. Thank you, Kathy. And I, I enjoy seeing your gift make room for you. And I know that you're gonna do great and awesome things. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud to, to know you. I am proud to see the things that you are and Conrad are doing. Even though you may not see me checking all your videos, just know that I'm always praying for you. I'm always rooting for you because you truly, truly, truly have been a friend to me for many, many years. And I'm very happy to see the success in your life. And just on a side note, Kathy, I'm glad it was a Gibson that hooked you up. Gibson's a strong. I don't know her, but she's a Gibson, so I got mad love for her. But anyway, blessings to everybody. If this message have encouraged you, I ask that you share it out. This is Michael Gibson, and it's why I go to church, because I'm focused.